I'm going to bring in Jonathan Turley, constitutional attorney, GW University law professor, and a Fox News contributor. Um, we've got part of the story here, Jonathan. We're still waiting to hear from Fonnie Willis, the DA in Fulton County, directly. But we do know that Nathan Wade, um, not a huge surprise, has uh, severed himself from this case. And now we're waiting to hear from her. Well, Wade didn't have any option, let alone a good option. Uh, the judge said that he could choose to resign, but there was not much else he could do, because if he didn't, the whole case would be taken out of the office. The only alternative was to go on an appeal uh, that would be unlikely to succeed and would delay the case further. The big question, as you note, uh, is what will Willis do? You know, the, she has now had multiple opportunities to do the right thing, which is to recuse herself. Every time that moment has come, she has declined to do so. She has put her personal interests ahead of the interest of her office and the people of Fulton County. I can't imagine how even Willis could go forward after this, this order which, and, and these damning findings uh, from this judge. I mean, he, he goes in great detail about how she made unprofessional decisions in a litany of errors uh, in her public statements and how she dealt with these allegations. Uh, she is damaged goods, and that's not going to be to the advantage of the people of Fulton County. I wonder. I mean, you know, how much do you think that the people in Fulton County are going to be looking at the details of this decision from this judge? And she has been very forceful doing her own PR on all of this. And she could easily come forward and say, you know, how um, unfair this attack was on her. We saw her do it already in the church where she said it was all race um, race-based in terms of coming after her. We could easily hear that from her again, although I would point out that in this decision, as you well know, uh, the judge tried to, you know, sort of slap that back and, and tried to admonish her from doing just that. But I don't know. What do you think, Jonathan? Well, this judge gave her uh, a great opportunity to do the right thing. He laid out two options, but he was clearly talking about a third option. He said, look, you could keep Wade, uh, and then I'll just transfer this to a different uh, jurisdiction. Or you could take this up on appeal, uh, um, and, then, uh, and then also there is the option, I should say the two primary options was to, to keep a Wade or to get rid of Wade, but she could have gone on appeal. But the real option that I think the judge was referencing here was you can always do the ethical thing. You could always do the professional option. You could say, I don't have a positive role left to play in this case. I blew it. Mm -hmm. And the, the thing that's troubling for most of us is that the court details the evidence about the relationship before Wade was hired. It's really Willis's conduct after this allegation arose that was the most troubling. Many of us believe that neither she nor uh, Wade were uh, honest on the stand. Uh, many people have suggested that there might have been false statements given on the stand. There's certainly evidence that suggests that Wade may have given false statements to a prior court in the divorce proceedings. All of that is a damning record that I think makes it practically impossible to go forward. She would have to continue to prosecute people who are accused of the same conduct that she is currently being accused of. And keep in mind, Wade is not out of this. He's been accused of false statements, and one, and one of those allegations I think is very compelling. Mm. He could be facing proceedings on the state level or the bar level. She will be a witness as those things unfold. So is she going to do that? keep that front going while she's trying to prosecute the biggest case in her office's history? Well, you know what? Precisely that thought process, Jonathan, may be why we haven't heard directly from her yet. And maybe she will be thinking this over for a few more hours or even a few more days. But she does want to keep on a timeline with this case. And so she has a motivation to want to get right back to work and potentially try to right her own reputation uh, in that process. It seems, just knowing what we've seen so far of her character, that that might be the likely route for her, despite 
your um, very uh, even-handed uh, assessment of, of what the right thing to do would be here. I'm not sure if that's what we're going to see. In terms of the big picture, and we talked about this before, you know, and I was thinking about Robert Herr, um, and I know that you gave him, um, you know, strong points for much of his presentation. Or you think back to James Comey or Robert Mueller, where all of these people laid out very, ta very bad behavior <laughs> on a lot on the part of a lot of people, from Hillary Clinton um, to, in this case, uh, Fonnie Willis. And then at the end, the coda is always, but we really can't prosecute. Uh, we really can't take her off the case. And don't you think this is one of the reasons that we see this, you know, disintegration of faith in this system in this country? I think there is a crisis of faith. And I've always been someone that has stood up for the U.S. legal system. I still am. But there's a reason for that crisis of faith. There is a double standard in this case. There's another case, the Rollins case, involving uh, the U former U.S. attorney uh, in Massachusetts. Uh, and she was found to have lied to federal investigators. And the Department of Justice just shrugged and said they wouldn't be prosecuting one of their own. And the American people look at this and they say, wow, I mean, there really is a, a, a two-track system of justice in this country. These people are destroying the system of justice that defines us. They're sawing at the branch upon which they all sit uh, by making these highly conflicted decisions. And I think you're absolutely right. We have to deal with that crisis of faith, but we have to do it by being more faithful to the rule of law. Yeah, I, I think people across the country just look at these situations and they say, where is the accountability and, and who is getting me off when I, um, you know, do something wrong or break the law? Uh, they feel like there are just a set of rules that apply to these people in high positions that don't apply to um, average folks across the country. And that's a real problem, as you put it, a, a crisis of confidence in the system, which is very, very destructive and dangerous for the country. Jonathan, thank you very much, you. as always. Great to have you with us, Jonathan Turley. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts, Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany, on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern, or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.